Hey everybody, it's Jason from the Texas Gun Vault. And once again, I'm coming to you with another range report. And today's range report is on a firearm that pretty much I've already reviewed before, but this one is in a different caliber. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Sig Sauer MCX Spear Pistol but chambered in 5.56. The one that I have reviewed in the past was in 762 by 39. However, this caliber for me is much more appealing because I believe it is the logical extension and progression of the AR-15 platform. The United States military has also adopted this platform in the XM7. However, their rifle is chambered in a full-powered rifle cartridge, the 6.8 by 51 millimeter, or on the civilian side of things, the 277 Fury. And the receivers for that gun are just a little bit bigger. I personally think that caliber is a little bit of an overkill and an overreaction because the military has wanted a more effective round to penetrate armor. However, I think using that gun in CQB settings and short engagements like the military says the modern battlefield is filled with is probably a little bit too much and I feel like in the future they're probably going to scale back to something in 5.56 again and it's going to be a gun very similar to this but only time will tell if that is the case. But before we get this gun to the range and I talk about the things that I like and don't like, as always, I want to thank the people that make these videos possible. First and foremost is the owner of this really cool gun. His name is D, and he has lent some amazing firearms to the channel in the past, and this one definitely does not disappoint. So thank you so much, D. Once again, it is an honor to get to shoot the cool guns of your collection. I always want to thank my Patreon supporters because through their monthly donations and support, they help keep the lights on around here and I couldn't do it without them and if you guys want to join my patreon you can do it for as little as one dollar a month and get to see all of these videos early there will be a link in the description below and as always I want to thank my primary sponsor who always provides the ammunition for these range reports thus making them financially feasible for me my good friend Mark from Brownworks and let me ask you a question do you like high-end collectible firearms I bet you do because you're watching a video on a really cool gun and most likely you have a collection of 1911s, Beretta 92s, CZ 75s or Browning High Powers just to name a few and these guns take wood panel grips and you might be looking for a set of customized grips to make your guns even more collectible and personalized to your style. Well I have the perfect grip company for you, Brownworks. Brownworks is a custom grip company making a wide variety of grips for a wide variety of firearms out of a wide variety of exotic woods and materials. I'm always showing off Mark's best work. He can make grips out of custom laminate woods. He can apply custom logos, custom textures, and custom engravings. He can finish these grips in a wide variety of colors, and he can even apply exotic materials like snakeskin and alligator skin to make your grips unique and one of a kind. So I'm going to put a link in the comment section below as as well as a coupon code for 10% off your first order. And I'm gonna ask you guys to go over there and check out everything he has to offer and get yourself a set of customized grips tailored to your specifications. So when you contact Mark, please tell him the Texas Gun Vault sent you. So once again, let's go over the gun that we are reviewing today. The Sig Sauer MCX Spear Pistol chambered in 556. This is a short stroke gas piston gun with a 10 and a half inch barrel. Has many of the same ergonomics as the AR-15 or M16. I've already talked about it has a little bit of adoption with the United States military and the Spear was the version of the MCX which replaced the Virtus which I didn't personally like because I felt like the Virtus was honestly just a little bit too heavy but they have definitely lightened this gun up in this iteration. So as always I want to talk about the things that I like and don't like about these guns before taking them to the range and I gotta tell you when it comes to this gun there's a lot of things about it that I do like. First and foremost, it is a SIG. And as time has gone on, I have come to appreciate SIG more and more. And they've been getting a lot of military contracts. 
All the SIGs that I have reviewed in the past have been pretty darn solid guns from their pistols to their rifles. And so I really feel like this one is probably going to be just the same. It might not be your cup of tea. It might not be the greatest pistol or the greatest rifle ever made. But overall, I think SIG makes some pretty darn quality stuff. Now, when it comes to this gun's aesthetics, I'm a big fan of the color. You guys know I love flat, dark earth, and this gun just has that right look for me. I do think they offer this now in black, but for my tastes, I love the way this thing looks. This gun also has a completely ambidextrous lower receiver, and it has pretty much the same manual of arms as an AR-15, so it's going to feel very natural for those of you that like that platform. We also have a plethora of stock and brace options, and that's because they all attach using this piece of Picatinny rail here in the back. So if you want a folding stock, you can get it. If you want a fixed stock, you can get that. If you want a telescoping stock, you can get it, and all of them can be easily changed out to fit your needs and desires. And I do like that aspect of this gun because this gun is very modular. From the handguards, it has a big aftermarket with triggers. In fact, the last thing about this gun I want to mention is the trigger. However, the trigger in this gun has been changed out by its owner. We have a Geisley trigger in this and not the stock Sig Sauer. I'm still going to give you guys the data and we're going to get out the lineman trigger pull weight gauge in just a moment, but it's important to know that as I review this, I always tell you anything that has been changed on these guns. And a lot of people that do get these do change them out to the Geisleys because they are known for being just some of the best triggers on the market. So before we get into the things I don't like about this gun, let me adjust the camera and let's get some data on this trigger and really see how good it is. So I want to test the trigger out in this thing, but as I said, it does have a Geisley trigger in it. But I still think this is valuable data to have because many people that are going to buy this gun are probably going to upgrade it themselves. And this is definitely one of the most popular options out there. So I do want to try it out. As always, we'll drop the magazine, ensure there is no ammunition in it. Then we will safety check the gun, pull the charging handle back, visually inspect that chamber. It looks like we are clear. The next thing we're going to do is turn on the lineman trigger pull weight gauge. We will clear the averages on this and let's see how good this trigger actually is. So our first pull Four pounds, 1.7 ounces. Four pounds, 0 0.1 ounces. Three pounds, 14.3 ounces. four pounds, 1.3 ounces. And finally we have four pounds, 1.9 ounces, which gives us an average of four pounds, zero, 0.7 ounces. So a pretty darn light trigger. This is about as light as I would want to go on a modern sporting rifle or sporting pistol. About four pounds is going to be about perfect for me. And I think on a mil spec trigger, about five pounds is perfect. So this trigger is absolutely awesome. So if this is an upgrade that you want to do to your MCX, that's what I was able to measure it at. All right, so let's get back to the rest of this range report and let's talk about a few things about this gun. I may not like. And as you can see, the trigger in this thing is pretty darn awesome. Geisley just makes some exceptional triggers, and those triggers have been adopted by the military and, of course, police forces around the world. They just make some of the best stuff. And their triggers go in AKs, they go in ARs, they go in MCXs and MPXs. They just got it down to a science, and I just love their products. 
But now let's talk about a couple things about this gun that I don't like. And the first thing I don't like is kind of something I did like previously, but not the exact attachment. And that is going to be this pistol brace. I do like the fact that you can, as I said, put on a plethora of different ones. But this one has this metal brace on the back. And I really feel like if you're going to shoot one of these in the pistol configuration, you need to find a brace that is going to be conducive to your shoulder. And personally, anything that is metal in this open is just not going to fit me that well. Now, if I own this particular gun, I would SBR. But I understand not everybody wants to SBR their guns and not everybody can, but I still think there are plenty more options out there than this particular one. But that's something that can easily be changed out. But something you do not have a choice of when you purchase this gun is the muzzle device. Now, I kind of like this muzzle device, but it is only compatible with the Sig Sauer latest generation of suppressors. And one of the problems with this is if you want to take this off and run something else, it's going to be really hard to get this thing off. Not only do they put thread locker on it, this also has a taper lock. So if you try to heat up that thread locker to get it off, guess what? This is going to be even harder to get off, and I have heard of people destroying their barrels trying to do so and destroying their upper receivers. I hear these things are just really, really difficult to get off, and I don't know why SIG does that. I guess they really want to sell their whole suppressor line, but you are pretty much stuck with this thing unless you take it to a gunsmith who can get it off or you have a set of specialty tools. As I said, go online and read about all the nightmares people are having trying to get these things off. But because of that taper lock and that thread locker, you are stuck with it. And I don't know if many people at home would be able to get that off easy, but I know so many people would want to because maybe they already have a surefire suppressor or want to go direct thread and you can't do it with this muzzle device. You're kind of stuck with it just a little bit. All right, so let's get this thing to the range. I'm really excited to see how this thing shoots. I've shot the one in 7.62 by 39, but I think I'm gonna like this one way more. So as always, I'm gonna start by setting up the target at just 10 yards. I just wanna make sure the gun functions. I wanna make sure I find out anything about the shootability of this gun, see if there's any issues, and then we'll go out to further distances and do other things. But this is just to get my initial thoughts and impressions. So here we go. Let's go to the range. One magazine, 10 yards, and let's just see how it shoots. And I can tell you, as compared to the one in 762 by 39 the shootability of this one is much better. The recoil is a lot lighter, and the gun seems to be a lot more well-balanced. So, no issues whatsoever, and my first opinions of this gun are very positive. All right, so now let's double the distance of this target. I'm going to go for the head on this IDPA silhouette, see what happens to this group, and of course, just put some more rounds down range and see if there's anything about this gun that I discover that I like or don't like and I'll report back to you. So let's get back to the range.
And pretty much my comments from the first portion of this range report still hold true. The gun is very shootable and it is well balanced. I can tell you though that this brace is starting to dig into my shoulder a little bit. It has some sharp edges and it has a metal back. And of course if I own this gun I would definitely SBR it. And I think for a rifle caliber I would go with a folding stock more than the telescoping stock but I would have to try out a couple if I owned this gun. Now for a 10 and a half inch barrel I'm very surprised by the report of this firearm. I was expecting it to be a little bit louder. It's definitely louder than a 16 inch AR-15 but it's definitely quieter than a 10 and a half inch AR-15. So I am pleasantly surprised by that and with the low light conditions at my range this flash hider is doing an excellent job at mitigating that flash. So I am surprised by that as well. All right so the next test I'm going to do is the bench rest test or the shoot from a barrier test and I know I'm only going to shoot this at 25 yards. In my personal opinion this is a CQB kind of weapon and so this is how I would personally use it. Yes in 5.56 this thing can go out a lot further than this but this is how I am going to test this and this is how I would use this gun. So here we go let's go back to the range and let's see how tight of a group I can get at 25 yards trying to take as much of the human element out of the equation as possible. And wow, I'm gonna take that. Now, of course, there is that myth out there that shorter barrels are not as accurate. The only thing that barrel length really affects is the velocity of the projectile, but it doesn't affect accuracy as long as it is long enough to get the projectile to spin enough to stabilize it. So I am really impressed by the accuracy of this firearm. Simply wow. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is put this firearm in the hands of my wife. And she really does love AR-15s, but I'm not really sure what she's gonna think about this brace. She's kinda of sensitive when it comes to grip textures and the way guns feel in her shoulder. So we're just gonna to have to find out. So let me load up another magazine, get this in her hands, and see what she thinks.
And as expected, she did talk about the brace. She did not like this. It's too sharp of an edge and she doesn't like how it fit in her shoulder. But the other thing I wasn't expecting her to say is that she didn't like the length of pull. It's too long from the end of the brace to the front of the trigger. And so that's one of the downsides to a folding brace or a folding stock that you have to think about if that is an important factor in a gun to you. So the length of pull was just a little bit too long. And so a telescoping option might be the better way to go for her if this was our gun. All right, so the next test I wanna do is the quick magazine change test. Now this gun has the same manual of arms as an AR-15, it just has more ambi controls, but I'm gonna try to do this the traditional way. So I think I'm gonna be able to do this pretty fast because I can normally do it fast with most AR rifles. So here we go, let's do the quick magazine change, two magazines, and let's see how fast I can shoot this. And I can do it just about as fast as I can any AR-15. The manual of arms is the same, but I will say the weight of this gun is different. And that's why I don't think my pattern on that target was as good as I would want it to be. All right, so the next test I wanna do and the last test is the mag dump test. Now this really isn't a test. It's just me wanting to have fun with all of these guns and just shooting them as fast as I can. So here we go. Let me just load up one of these mags, shoot it as fast as I can and just have some fun with it. And then I'll give you guys my final thoughts. And that was definitely a lot of fun. I can tell you, this Geisley trigger is an awesome upgrade. If you have one of these MCXs, you gotta do that. I was able to get a really nice rhythm with it, so that was a lot of fun. I'm really impressed with it. So what are my final thoughts on the Sig Sauer MCX Spear Pistol? chambered in 5.56. Well, I can tell you, I like this gun way better in 5.56 than I do in 7.62 by 39. The gun is exceptionally accurate. It's very shootable, very well balanced. I'm impressed with so much of it. I've already told you, I think this gun needs to be SBR'd. I'm pretty sure D is going to do that once I get it back to him. And that's gonna be a huge upgrade as well. As a pistol, I think it is okay. Now, personally, when it comes to the barrel length of this gun, I really would prefer it as a 16 inch rifle. I think it's a softer shooting gun and it's just a better platform as a rifle than a short barreled rifle or a pistol. But that's just kind of a personal preference. But the gun runs really good, very accurate, very shootable. Manual of arms are very familiar because it's just like an AR-15. I really like it. So on my star system, how would I rate the Sig Sauer MCX Spear? 5.56 pistol. Well, I want to give it two ratings because I think as a pistol, it's only about four out of five stars. I really feel like this platform is much better as a rifle just because of the nature of the brace. But if this was SBR, I'm sure it would be 4.5 stars out of five. So those would be the two ratings. And that's just kind of how I feel about this platform, this gun, and a 10 and a half inch 5.56 but I really think this platform would shine in the 16 inch rifle variant. But this is also a great gun and a great option if you like the shorter, more compact weapons. So as a pistol, four out of five stars and probably as an SBR, 4.5 stars out of five. So what do you guys think? What do you think of the caliber that this is in because I think 5.56 is the best caliber. But I know some people are gonna want this in 300 blackout and some are going to prefer the AK round 762 by 39. So let me know what you think in the comment section below and are you interested in the Sig Spear platform? So 
as always, thanks for watching.